seeing from Democrats now for years. How does it work? Okay, step one, get all liberals repeating the same pernicious lies, like this one. It's sick deciding in some states that you cannot bring water to people standing in line waiting to vote. They see legislators deciding that it's a crime to give people water. Imagine arresting someone for handing a bottle of water to an elderly black woman who lived through the last fight for the right to vote. Total lies. The law only prevents partisan electioneers from using food and beverages to sway voters in line. Nonpartisan poll workers, on the other hand, are allowed to provide food and drink for general, general use. And then came another whopper from Biden himself. What I'm worried about is how un-American this whole initiative is. It's sick. Deciding that you're going to end voting at 5 o'clock when working people are just getting off work. Oh, that is Joe's bedtime after all. But once again, that's a lie. Now, don't take it from me. Take it from the Washington Post fact checker. Not a single expert we consulted who studied the law understood why Biden made this claim, as this was the section of the law that expanded early voting for many Georgians. Huh. But the left does not care, because they've already moved on to amplifying the original lie through their pop culture and pro-sports echo chamber. And of course, just as with the BLM rampages last summer, Wall Street always supports the hard left on these issues. While not explicitly mentioning Georgia, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon issued this Weasley statement today saying, we regularly encourage our employees to exercise their fundamental right to vote, and we stand against any efforts that may prevent them from being able to do so. Yeah, I'm going to take my moral cues from a guy whose firm is cashing in on slave labor in China. Right, Jamie? But even sleazier is this man, Hillary donor Mark Benioff, who runs the company Salesforce. His company tweeted that the Georgia law is unnecessarily limiting provisional ballots, limiting trustworthy, safe, and equal access to voting. False, false, and yes, false. But consider the source. They oppose voter ID requirements for voting but are one of the firms actually working on future vaccine passports. That's medical IDs that will in the future give you your freedom back, that's what they're saying, to travel and attend large events. So these people are total frauds. And once you scratch the surface, they have zero credibility. The same as I mentioned earlier with the woke sports type, especially the woke sports media with one CNN sports contributor suggesting another way to bully Georgia. We can start by stripping Atlanta of Major League Baseball's All-Star Game, which is set to take place in the city in July. And by the way, the same players who link arms to kneel for the national anthem are apparently also open to this idea. Players are very much aware of the new laws. MLB Players Association Director Tony Clark recently told the Boston Globe. After its passage, Players talked about relocating the All-Star game, he said. By the way, as they threaten Georgia's bottom line, we all have to remember that all this woke activism is terrible for their bottom line. A new poll found that one-third of viewers are watching less sports because of social justice shenanigans. And this is just the beginning of the economic pain they're going to feel if they join the mob that's hoping to rig future elections. Because I sense this, that Americans want more sports and less politics. But the far left goon squads are betting that weak need corporate boards, they're gonna collapse under pressure. Across the internet, growing calls to boycott Delta Airlines, Coca-Cola, and Home Depot, all Georgia-based giants. The message that I want them to take away from this is that voter suppression is bad for business, is bad for your bottom line. It's time to change this storyline. So how about this? Any business that bows down to boycotters better be prepared to run into the buzzsaw of tens of millions of patriotic Americans who will vote as well with their wallets. I'm talking moms and dads who are sick of being lectured to 
by spoiled brat activists who produce zero that is useful to America. And I, I know a lot of young professionals who may not be all that vocal, but who recoil at the notion that somehow Hollywood knows best about how to run elections. What we're seeing in Georgia is just the latest of the left's broader campaign of intimidation and distortion. But it's perhaps the most dangerous to our nation's future. So now's the time for all Americans concerned about secure and meaningful elections to start getting involved and make it clear that any business or organization that helps the Democrats in this rigging process, that they understand the meaning uh, of this new rallying cry that I don't know who came up with, but it sounds good, get woke and go broke. And Georgia can't do this alone, of course. Other GOP governors, legislatures, they all need to stand up and push for fair election laws. Laws that preserve our fundamental right of all Americans to vote and have their votes counted by trustworthy and nonpartisan